Hello Pinecrest family and guests. Thank you so much for joining me today as we continue our Holy Week videos. Uh, today we come together on what we consider Good Friday. And it's kind of an amazing name that we even call this Good Friday when we think about why it is we're coming together, what it is that we're talking about. You know, a lot of people today don't even understand what Good Friday is all about. They, they don't have a clue that we're talking about the fact that Christ on this day would be murdered on a cross. It was no different in, in Jesus' time for those who weren't in Jerusalem, who didn't have a Jewish background, they weren't expecting this great Redeemer, this Savior to come in. They were living life uh, like normal. Like many of the world today, just continue to live on like normal, not even thinking about our Savior on that cross. And you see, if you recall from yesterday's video with Pastor Stephen, and what a great video it was. If you haven't watched it, I encourage you to go back and watch it before we go through today's uh, event of, of Good Friday. But Pastor Stephen was talking, and he continued to go on about all that is occurring with Jesus in the garden. He's talking about the time that Jesus is in prayer, talking to the Father, what's going on with the disciples. And as it comes to Friday, Jesus is... He's betrayed. He's taken away. And if you recall, Peter slices the ear of one of the, the guards that's come to get Jesus. And Jesus heals and tells him to stop. And, and this trial takes place of Jesus with Caiaphas in front of the Sanhedrin. And these witnesses are brought in to speak out against Jesus and, and the fact that he is the Son of God. And the Sanhedrin come to this decision that Jesus needs to be put to death. Well, you see, in Jewish law and Jewish custom, they could not actually carry out that death sentence. They had to go and take this to those who were in charge. They took it over to the Roman leader of the time. They, they take it to Pilate, and Jesus is then turned over to Pilate. Pilate realizes quickly, hey, something's not right here. Why are you bringing me this Jesus? He's one of yours. Why are you asking me to put him to death? And and so the Sanhedrin says, we, we bring you a criminal. We bring you a criminal whose sentence is death. And, and Pilate, still knowing something's not exactly right, says to Jesus, are you king of the Jews? And you know, Jesus says, are, are you asking me this on your own? Or have others told you about me? Have you heard about me? Pilate's you know, not a, a Jewish leader. He's a Roman leader. He wants to know what exactly is going on. And Jesus tells Pilate, he says this, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Now, Pilate still understand something's not right but he hears Jesus's answer and you hear what Jesus says he says my kingdom is not of this world and, and, and so Pilate rightfully says so so you're a king then you you are a king and I love Jesus's response here because it speaks so well to why this is Good Friday why the worst murder in history is also the best Look at Jesus' response to Pilate when he says, you are a king. He says this in the book of John. He says, you say that I am a king. I was born for this. And I have come into this world for this to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Jesus answers the question perfectly. And in short, yes, Jesus says, I came and I am a king. He says, I, I came for this. Jesus, who also said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, points out that he is more than just life, but he is the truth. And that's what Pilate asks, is his, one of his final questions to Jesus here, is he says, what is truth? And we're going to answer that at the end of today's video. We're going to talk about what truth is is but I, I want to come back to Pilate here for just a minute and what's happening you see Pilate now is has found out okay so, something's up they want to put Jesus to death the Sanhedrin comes to Pilate and says this man has now told you he's a king and if he is a king then he is against Caesar and you can't be against Caesar you who are a leader of Rome and and so Pilate says okay well then as we carry out this sentence as is common on Passover I do have something one last one last bit of hope that I can do you see, at Passover, 
as was custom, Pilate would take out two prisoners and say, one can be passed over, the sins forgiven, the crimes forgiven, and they can be released. And there was two people, there was Jesus and there's Barabbas. And it's so interesting that Pilate has found no basis for the charges against Jesus. It's recorded in all four gospels that, that he says this. Pilate knew the chief priest had, had handed Jesus over out of self-interest. So he says, here, my last resort, let me offer this up to your own people. Let them decide. And I've told you a few things over the last couple days. And one of those was that, you know, expectations didn't meet reality. It was that way with Judas. And I asked you if you were with us last Sunday for the triumphal entry of Palm Sunday to remember those people laying down the palm branches and bringing Jesus in as ruler and king. Here they have their choice. Barabbas the murderer. Actually, we're told that yes, he was a murderer, but the people he killed were, were in the names of his nationality. He was a, a zealous person for his nation. And, and they shout out, free Barabbas. We want Barabbas. For Jesus, they shout, crucify him. Those same people that were dropping those palm branches, those same individuals laying down palm branches to welcome this Messiah, this King, are now shouting, crucify him. And Barabbas, this revolutionary, this man who fought and killed for his nation, free him. Free him. We want him. You see, I'm standing today in front of one of the entryways of our church, my favorite way to come in and see this beautiful cross behind me. We see this as a sign of hope, a sign of joy. But on Good Friday, when we remember and think back to what Jesus is doing and what's going on in his life, as he's leading to literally the cross. We remember that there was no hope that day for those disciples. No hope for the followers of Jesus because this king this messiah who was coming to save and free his people he'd be nailed to a cross on this friday after he's humiliated after he's beaten after his own people have shouted to crucify him nailed to that cross his disciples his followers all watching him die and in that final breath jesus calls out to tell us die it is finished. You know, as people were standing there and see Jesus take those final breaths and pass from this world, they think it is finished, that he is gone. We had just talked not that long ago about Jewish leaders who had talked of revolutionaries and claimed the messiahs in the past that had failed and, and died and everything they had built up, it just faded away. Here it is on this Friday, Jesus dies on a cross. He'll be buried. And they think, what do we do now? Well, if they only knew what was to come, if they only knew what Sunday would bring, this Good Friday, they'd see the greatness in it. That cross behind me, that sign of hope, it was a sign of disaster on them. But as Jesus breathed it out, as that curtain tore, as even the Roman centurion says, truly, this is the Son of God, hope would show back up soon in just a mere few days. I encourage you to come join us on Easter Sunday. Celebrate that resurrection, that living hope, the fact that death could not stop Jesus, that death was defeated in sin as well. I'd love to see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. here at Pinecrest Baptist Church. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. God, as we come on this solemn day to remember that Jesus was handed over and nailed to that cross. God, it was the worst, most horrific, most unjust death that's ever happened in human history. But God, it's a death that all of our sins and all of our iniquities were placed upon, that a punishment had to be given, and that punishment was your son. God, be with us. Let us rejoice in that hope that's to come on Sunday, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.